Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good look over here. I wanna, I wanna call out, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the bedside tables in the dormitories. Um, <laughs> very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's so, part of lore. It's part of lore, there we go. All right. So now we're walking out into we, we really tried making these low ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set yeah. <laughs> sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, yeah. and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different and that is entirely intentional. We just want to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. Begin customizing that experience right away. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Look at that. So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over it. This, all, oh, the, this all, all the details come from J.K. Rowling's writings for this common room. The round doors, the hanging vines, even the dancing badgers on the <laughs> fireplace. It's got a real earthy vibe. Yeah. It's very, very earthy. Which is which is like elements for each of the houses, yeah. right? Hufflepuff like, is earth, Ravenclaw is air, Gryffindor is fire, and Slytherin is water. We wow. really, really leaned into that for each common room. Wow. So if it feels earthy, we've got a little earthen passageway. That's, that's what we were, hopefully yeah. it should feel very familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. But I, I know you don't want to leave, but we're going to be leaving. Thank you. I understand. Whoa, the sound effects, though. Like, looking back at the past trailers, it was just music, but kind of hearing how Hogwarts is now, it's so cool. Very tactile. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's going to make use of one of our spells, Revelio. Use Revelio right here, because there's a little magic going on. You notice a little something there. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are something that we kind of interchangeably called Revelio pages or lore pages. And you'll notice a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Yeah. You see that we got XP. some XP for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that we've advanced something called like a field guide challenge okay. up okay. in the corner. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So we had to ask ourselves, <laughs> but uh, in our game, we had to answer the question, you know, we're a late fifth year. What does that mean? How do we catch up to the other students? Okay, okay. And so we have an answer to that question, and and it's given to you by the staff. So there's something that we call the Wizard's Field Guide that's granted to you early on in the game. And the Wizard's Field Guide is how how you actually work on catching up with the other students. So Andrew, if you hit pause for me up here before we push forward a little bit, you can see in our pause menu, it's got this book theme. Wow. That's your Wizard's Field Guide. And you can see your house kind of crest right, overlaid yeah. over it. Right? Okay, okay. And you can see that on your level as well. So that the field guide has this magical property of looking in there. You'll see different types of challenges that are combat challenges, wow. quest challenges, exploration challenges. And you can see field guide pages are on there as yeah, well. Yeah, 1%. So, we, uh, yeah. we unlock that one field guide page. Yeah. That, that entire category is one of the ways that uh, the book itself kind of fills out into the school and spills out into the school. Uh, not <laughs> gonna... Circular circus. Oh, all, all the portraits. The yeah. And I did notice the flu flame just ignite right there, which was so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Fast travel points there. House hour glasses. We had to. I, I, how much fun was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? Oh, they're gorgeous, but but that they're they're just like in the books. Yeah, right next to the Great Hall. It's a nod yeah. to lore. House points is not a core mechanic or system in the yeah, game. We, it is we didn't turn it into like a, a gameplay system, but it's definitely present throughout our narrative. And and there are lots of choices where we want to nod to things that aren't don't aren't necessarily gameplay systems, but, yeah. but we nod to them as, as part of the narrative. Over to the right the there, Andrew world. was teasing, that's the uh, Great, Great Hall, Hall. over yeah. through those doors. Again, we're not going there, we're, he's just kind of like, <laughs> ah, ah, you know. no. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another collectible page, you know, just again showing you like just these things around Hogwarts that you can oh, do man. and pick up and, that's a shot straight from the trailer too. It's that part right there. I, I recognize that. We might be giving you a little fan service here with uh, with callbacks to those. So, and, um, and this must be summertime because I noticed these are the summertime windows. These windows will change with the seasons. Yeah, the detail they put in this is kind of. I get surprised by it all the time. <laughs> the sentient the magic thing. castle. So. <laughs> oh man, and we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate just to 
kind of chill out, play, meet each other outside of the Great Hall before and after meals. And I, I, I love the way that when the castle interconnects to, uh, that it interconnects outside, inside, there, there are pathways on both sides of things. So you really get a sense of scope yeah. to, to how big this castle and, is. And when you see things, like you'll, you'll notice a bridge over there, that's a place you can go to and cross. Like yeah. everything is, everything that you see is a place that you can visit. Wow. We tried so, we put a lot of effort in making it feel really alive. Um, not just with student population, but even just the greenery and stuff, it's Scotland. Yeah. And this castle has been here for hundreds of years. So it just kind of, <laughs> The moss yeah. and all the trees that have overgrown it, and oh my gosh, that landscape, that this, Scottish this location might look a little familiar to you. Um, I thought I recognized it. I believe this is from the spring ASMR, and yes, so that puzzle right there, that view, uh, Andrew is taking us right back to I'm that. I'm going to tell Andrew not to interact <laughs> with that puzzle and to keep moving on. No. We can't spoil everything. We can't give you everything, right? Hogwarts so. contains a lot of secrets. <laughs> oh. Station. I love that. that. I each love direction, that. you know, it's green over there, so the greenhouse is over there. Transfiguration courtyard, you know, library straight ahead. So it's kind of a the hub oh my of God. a lot of the castle. Even the color visually, you can just tell, okay, green, oh, green greenhouse. That way. Oh my God. I should, a lot of it will be subconscious, but yeah. it, it'll help you really feel, learn the castle and mm -hmm. feel like you know your way around. <laughs> that's, that's not to say that it's easy to learn. All of us here still get pretty lost in it, <laughs> it on a daily a basis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got this grin on his face over there that's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. That statue is from the reveal trailer, that, that dragon. Oh, my gosh. This is another location where the students will gather, um, you know, and just kind of chill out. And, and an uh, opportunity to uh, talk to somebody, get a, get a yeah. quest giver here. Is everything all right? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm Nelly, by the way. I'm just so excited that the Dedalian keys are back. The what keys? The Dedalian keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Rumour is that a former headmistress, Professor Moll, conjured them to protect the contents of certain locked cabinets years ago. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch one. Why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. So it's kind of side like different interactions with different characters uh, can also offer different choice points for the player, and then some of those things uh, can can affect things game wide. Some of these affect characters' lives, uh, the ending of the game, um, and sometimes it's just about you being a little bit of a nice guy or just being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So sure. the scale really varies, but but uh, but it's very is. iconic, and very unique to anywhere else in the castle. Somebody else that we can talk to, uh, notably a, a younger student. Yeah, um, she looks like a first year or an 11 year old. Are you all right? Don't you know who I am? Zenobia Noak, the girl whom everyone at school hates for no reason. Everyone hates you? Why? Because Hogwarts is full of bullies and spoil sports. Leander Pruitt's one of the worst, that no-talent moon mind. I wanted to make some new friends, and so I brought my collection down to the common room. My gobstone collection, that is. I was hoping someone would want to play. Are you familiar with gobstones? Little balls, like marbles. Grand game. And if you lose, they spray you with a foul-smelling liquid. I haven't much interest in a game that sprays you with odors. Only if you lose, which I never do. Or at least, not often. <sighs> People can be so cruel. Just because they're sprayed all over with smelly gobstone spit, it's their own fault for losing. Imelda is one of the worst losers. Ever written a story or a terrible as well. And now those poor losers have taken my gobstones and hidden them in very high places all over the school. Sounds as if you caused the smelly situation and they responded accordingly. I didn't
didn't make the rules. Anyway, I can't work out how to get them back on my own. I don't think I know the necessary spells yet. I need someone, perhaps a selfless and talented fifth year to help me. I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate the help. If you do find all of my gobstones, do come and see me again. I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and Jackstone by myself in no time. I, I love that interaction with her because there's so many ways that you can go with that. You can like, <laughs> you can feel for her. You and I know here too, I, I, we're, I we're like, <laughs> <laughs> again, <laughs> I'm like, we're in the Fist Against the Dark Arts Pass. I recognize that staircase to the left where we were just at Andrew was walking by. I also recognize the dragon at the very top. Oh my gosh. Being in a classroom, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how classes work because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately decided not to go the sim route. So I think like one of the speculations was, is there time of day? And you know, that kind of thing. Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There and is kind of a day-night cycle. Yeah, yeah there is a day-night cycle, but uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so there's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something, each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah. and moments yeah. in those missions. Yeah. And then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions, essentially, where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And but, I just, want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world. And, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with the... Uh, <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> Victorian high, you know. Yeah. Well, high society. High yeah. society. Yeah. Yeah. It's no wonder you like this. Uh, Marauders, a name that came from the Mar Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality and... Personality, I like that because yeah, it, it gives, it does. Like Hogwarts has character. Hogwarts is its own character, no matter where you go. Yeah, feels just a little bit different. Yeah, it's a sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Uh, yeah. Speaking of characters, speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> My teacher <laughs> poltergeist <too. laughs> You know, we talked about building on lore too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky. Yeah. And he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. It's but a oh, fraction so of uh, <laughs> this enormous castle. Oh, all. Uh, <laughs> but we're closing it out here in the clock tower. So another recognizable location. Yeah. But this is where Crossed Wands, which is the secret, not so secret dueling club is <laughs> uh, that the students have put together. Professors definitely know about it, but they think they're being clever. <laughs> uh, and it's run by this uh, Luke and Brattleby here. Who's in a younger year, but we kind of like that this, yeah, that he's running things. Hello, Lucan. May I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all of your spells before the dummy lands. If you need to stop practicing before you finish all of them, let me know. And this is a really good opportunity to now jump into combat because really in the game, this is going to be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a new way. Uh, for me personally, this was where the game like really starts to open up to the possibilities. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we've set, up a, we've set up a training dummy and this is kind of an activity where you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell, followed by four, what we just kind of lovingly refer to as basic shots. Um, <laughs> uh, there are certain spells that the wizards kind of like use, just kind of fling. Andrew's using one now. And you trigger that by tapping R2 on your controller. So you mm -hmm. can see in the corner R2. So if you tap R2, that throws out a basic shot. But that R2 is also your gateway to all of the, the uh, spells that you might slot. So if you okay. hold R2 instead, you can see how the diamond expands. And if we let go, you see how it contracts? Yeah. And so if you hold it again, it expands. And so when it expands, and all the spells that you slotted while you're holding that button can now be tapped with your face buttons. Awesome. And not only that, but over the course of the game, you can gain um, additional spell diamonds, up to four additional ones, so that you can slot up to 16 spells you know, pretty much instantly. And then that helped us um, fulfill the fantasy of, in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah. 
and and so you learn over the course of these events, you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of another feature of the wheel, which is their cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So as you're casting spells, just to make sure that you're not just kind of like repeatedly using one thing over and over and right, over again, right. you can see cooldowns on the spells that he's using uh, on the wheel. And then as you progress through the game, there are different things that can affect things like cooldowns through your talents, uh, different things that okay. allow you to kind of like okay. juggle and adjust and, and wow. update those things. And so if you hold down our R2 and you tap the D-pad, it will switch between your other diamonds if you've unlocked them. And, and that's how you access all those. Oh, man. I look like we're about to get some action over here. Yeah. So this is, this is a great way to kind of learn how to pull things together, <laughs> um, so you pull those combos right together. Yeah. Tap, Accio, tap, tap, tap. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well Good done, job, <laughs> And that's just against the dummy, but I mean... Uh... I'd say that's enough practice. You looked good out there. Thank you, Lucan. I say better to discover one's weaknesses during practice than during a duel. You'll be a fearsome challenger now. I think now we can, uh, we can take on something a little more challenging. It's going to shoot back. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about uh, some more features of the combat system. Hello, Lucan. Is the next round of Cross Wands all set? Why, yes it is. I've got a great match lined up. Ready for another round? We're on a PS5 dev kit here, so we're going to be able to kind of pause, the, <laughs> pause yeah. the action yeah. Yeah. and talk about what you're seeing on the screen, because uh, there is about to be a lot going on. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. All right, here you can select uh, if you want to fight with somebody else, some of One your of classmates. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, we're not. We want we want that action to feel a little more frantic <laughs> towards you to really get you that sense of of, uh, of combat. Into into gameplay here. Andrew's gonna pretty pretty handily finish these these other students off here. Win this duel. Look how fast it is. It's like a dance. <laughs> yeah, we really felt like the. Um, we really felt like in the movies, there's almost like a. Uh, it's kind of like a. There, there's this element of kind of like fencing from a very great yeah, distance. Yeah, that's and, a good call. And there are a lot of uh, a lot of things that we had to do with with our controls and combat system in order to kind of capitalize on that idea. That's pretty unique to the Wizarding world. Yes. Well, perhaps you should try that next time. The other duelists have already taken notice of you, but after that last round, they'll really have it in for you. You'd better keep practicing if you want a chance at winning, or at least surviving the next round. I'll let you know when we're ready. Hope to see you then. The next round is for all the gobstones, so to speak. A glimpse at the, the scale of the castle back there. All right, so we're going to wrap.